What is the creepiest missing person case you know about? The disappearance of Fred Valentich, he was a pilot who set off from a Melbourne airport on a training exercise over Bay Strait, he never arrived at King Island. What makes it creepy that he radioed in that there was a strange craft following him and the last piece of communication was a metallic scraping sound. Experts said that he was disorientated and was flying upside down and seeing the lights from his own craft on the water but as Cessna he was flying could only fly upside down for a few seconds before stalling. They have never found him or his craft. The case of J.C. Lee Duggard has always fascinated and mortified me. 11-year-old girl kidnapped on her way to school in 1991. In 2009, she turns up live. Turns out, married couple kidnapped her and kept her in a series of sheds in their backyard for 18 years as a sex slave. During this time the man impregnated her twice and she had two kids, 11 and 15 when the three of them were finally rescued. These kids had never seen the outside world and all they knew were what she was able to teach them with her own limited knowledge. Thankfully, she was reunited with her parents and last known to be focusing on raising her kids and generally staying as private as possible with her life. Missing pregnant woman in my town. Can't find her anywhere. She put up an ad on Craigslist for other pregnant women to hang out with and to get advice from. Only one person responded and they became really great friends. They were friends for a couple months and one day she just goes missing for about a week. Suddenly, someone sees a woman laying on the side of the road. Guts pulled out and laid in a neat pile. So fresh there's still steam. Dental records prove it is the pregnant woman but there's no baby to be seen anywhere. Turns out the friend had cut out her baby and brought it to the hospital claiming to have had the baby in her car. What tipped them off was that instead of a placenta, like the woman thought, the woman had brought pregnant ladies' ovaries instead. A girl in my grade, when I was in grade 6, was reportedly missing after having an argument with her mom in the parking lot of a grocery store. Security cameras were checked and they found out the mother had lied about that. After several days we found out that the mom had strangled her with twine, pulled her pants off to make her look like she was assaulted, and threw her by a leg. Disturbing stuff. There were only about 30 people in my grade so it was a close-knit community. This girl who was working alone got dragged out of gas station, all seen on camera. The footage was so bad they couldn't figure out who it was so they put out a message in the paper with his coat description. Someone eventually says their janitor always wears that coat. They go to the guy's house and search non-stop over and over again. They find a single burned tooth in the backyard. It would have been inconclusive but the girl had gone to a dentist conference and got a just on the market filling that only like two people in the world had. So they caught him. My would-be aunt was abducted and presumably murdered when she was a young girl, seven years old. The primary suspect was Dead Bundy, who lived down the street and was 14 at the time. My grandmother wrote to him while he was on death row and he wrote back denying responsibility. My mom and the deceased shared a bedroom and were very close in age. There's a book about it. Very creepy in general but especially to me considering it could have easily been my mom and I never would have existed. Dead has said that he would never talk about some of his murders because they were too close to home too close to family, or involved victims who were very young. A local one for me, but the case of Dakota James. A Pittsburgh college student named Dakota James goes missing. Police say he fell in the river, city residents disagree. A bunch of guys went missing around that time, and they all had the same gay dating app on their phone. Three lighthouse keepers went missing from a tiny island off Scotland. No one knows what happened but when people came to the island they saw that two of the three raincoats were missing, a meal was left half-eaten, and a chair was knocked over on the ground. When they checked the diary of one of the lighthouse keepers, it talked about a violent storm and how the other two lighthouse keepers were acting weird. What's creepy is that there never was a storm in that region even though the diary said there was. All three lighthouse keepers were never found. Christopher Kertza. In 1989, at the age of 17, Christopher vanished. The day he disappeared, his family received a mailed letter from Duluth, Minnesota telling his parents that he couldn't explain why he was doing what he was doing. His van was later found hours away with a note detailing whose it was. He was never found. Based on the story, I'm thinking suicide or he just walked away. He had been struggling a bit prior to the events and only took out $200 before disappearing. His van was left at a rest stop outside a heavily wooded area but multiple searches found nothing. 
They believe he may have hitchhiked to another area. Possible he was murdered. Took his own life. Or got caught up in the homeless lifestyle and is still alive but a vagabond living on the streets. Weird story, though, with how easy he vanished. There's a couple of girls that went missing in a town not too far from where I live. The kids were taking a walk across this railroad bridge. They were taking Snapchat videos as they were walking. As they neared the middle of the bridge they turned and noticed a man following them onto the bridge. They got him on video, you could tell dude had malicious intent. They went missing shortly after they took the video. Sad stuff, they still haven't been found. The daughter of a friend of my mother went missing a few years ago. While they were looking for her, news crews interviewed a friend of hers from class, who was distraught. During the interview, he said he hoped she could be found, and they informed him that they had just found a piece of her body. At this, he went pale and had to walk away and sit down on the sidewalk. Some time later, it was discovered that he was the one who did it. There was this girl. We were in the same class in middle school. She disappeared and was never heard from again. Shortly after, her abusive stepdad left the country for a few years then came back. This is Oklahoma. He was a part of the good old boy network. He was never charged. Cops didn't even investigate. Her sister is still fighting to uncover the truth. That was in 1989 or early 90s. Hard to remember the exact year. Her name was Monique. There's a darkness over this place because of generations of casual cruelty and a lack of value placed on human life. Took place in the 18th or 19th century, but a group was traveling through the forest. One guy was around 30 yards ahead, joking around, and started running even more ahead of the group. As the stragglers turned the bend, they saw him trip over a log and he was gone. All witnesses said they saw him trip and fall. But it was as if he fell into a portal. There was no hole, the path was clear and well traveled minus the fallen tree slash log, and the ground was sturdy. They stragglers were no more than 10 meters away and it was a clear day. Guy was never seen again. Not sure about the veracity of it, but it always stuck with me. The guy didn't have any debts, the people he was with were friends, and no foul play was suspected. He just tripped and fell into an abyss and was near seen again. When I was in high school, a sort of friend of mine went missing. She was tiny for her age but really cute. And one day she just disappeared. Vanished without a trace. Cops thought she ran away. But she wasn't the type. She was serious, dedicated. We all volunteered to walk along the canals, etc., to try to see if we could find her. Months went by, everyone went back to their lives but our parents. Nothing ever turned up. No trace. No body. No nothing. I wonder a lot about what happened to her. This was 30 years ago. My babysitter, Beth Miller, vanished while jogging. We lived in a very small, population in the hundreds, mountain town in Colorado. When it happened it was complete chaos. The entire town was devastated for years. There was a psychic brought in, the police were accused of a cover-up. No one knows. It's heartbreaking to the family. 30 plus years later and they are still looking. Dorothy Jane Scott was a woman who disappeared from Anaheim, California, in 1980, after getting strange calls from an unidentified man who claimed to be stalking her and proved it through telling her details of her life. One day, she brought her co-worker to the hospital for a spider bite. After her co-worker got seen, she went outside to pull the car around, and her two co-workers who were waiting watched her car approach them, but then speed away driving erratically. Her mother then started receiving anonymous phone calls for four years from a man claiming to be her murderer. Eventually, one day, her father picked up the line and the man never called again. Angela Hammond was a pregnant woman who was on the phone with her fiancé one night in 1991 from a payphone a few blocks from his house when she noticed a suspicious Ford pickup circling the block. The driver pulled up beside her and hung around for a while, apparently looking for something. Hammond asked him if he needed the phone, but he said he would try to use the phone again in a minute. Suddenly, she screamed. Her fiancé tried to get into his car to save her, and he saw the truck driving off, but after two miles of chasing it, he damaged his transmission and was unable to chase it further. She's never been found. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.